We all love bargain prices, right? Well, I know I do. So let's all ride this train as it drops, okay? Hi, this is Tim from TradingStrategyGuides.com. I bet you can't guess what stock we're looking at today. I know my thumbnail is kind of mysterious, right? <laughs> I'm not going to keep you in suspenders any longer. We're going to check out Coca-Cola today. They may be at the top of the heap in the soft drink wars, but they're looking sort of bearish. I'll show you that in just a minute. Just so you know, there are a thousand creative decisions to make for each of my videos. Well, maybe not a thousand, but quite a few. And here's one I had to make this morning. When I made that thumbnail, I found this very cool image of a Coca-Cola Christmas truck all lit up with what I'm pretty sure is the Tower Bridge in London. I love bridges. I started to use this as the background for the thumbnail and the background for the slides, but it's not really Christmas yet, right? So I didn't want to rush it. But I love this picture so much I knew I had to share it with you. In any case, we've got another day with a bunch of charts to cover, so I'll just speed right along. Plus, a new factoid of the day, and then the Coca-Cola trade set up. Then we'll get to today's trading maxim. Stay tuned. Remember to click the subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss any of our trading goodness. Alright, let's zoom through some charts here. Well, it's early and the market hasn't opened up yet. But Apple's Friday close kept it solidly in this consolidation right here, where we've got a tiny bit of profit on the second half. It's looking a little bit like a continuation triangle here, which could break either way. Uh, but since we're locked in at break even, I'm going to wait it out. Statistically, a continuation triangle will continue in the direction of the incoming trend. So hopefully we'll get a break to the upside from this. So Bitcoin showed us a lower low right here by just a little bit below this one, but retreated back to our initial target level right there. I don't like that, but it did make a new low, so I'm moving my stop down to 83.50 to lock in 180 bucks on the second half. Ethereum Classic closed in positive territory on Sunday, which is a good sign but is back up toward our entry level now just after oh nine o'clock New York time starting to look a bit like a descending triangle right here so that's good for us and the volume and the volatility are continuing to decline as well I'm also going to wait this one out hopefully we'll get a break to the downside shortly so Good old Nike hit the target while I was editing Friday's video, and Friday's close was pretty bullish. I moved the stop to break even on Friday, and I'll move it up further if we can get a break above Friday's high up here. The dollar Swissy is attacking the top of the range right now, so that's a pretty bullish sign. Keep your eyes on this one. We could get a trigger on it today. And gold is attacking the bottom of the range right here. Trader interest kind of seems to be increasing in this downward move right here. So this could be a big one that triggers today. So make sure you keep your eyes on it. All right, let's take a look at today's factoid of the day. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there. Barbara Streisand cloned her dog. There, I said it. It's out there and we got to figure out what this means in the grand scheme of things. Maybe Reped is just around the corner, who knows. Of course, I've known for a long time that cloning was a thing when Dolly the Sheep was successfully cloned back in 1996. But somehow, even though I'm a huge sci-fi nerd, I didn't make the mental leap that at some point we would be able to clone our pets even after Arnold showed us it was a future thing in 2000. But apparently cloning is still very expensive, so only someone with Barbara's resources can actually pull it off. 
Not once, but twice, she took cells from her beloved Samantha, a Coton de Tullier, which kind of looks like a poodle to me, but what do I know about any dog breed that's not a German Shepherd, right? Anyway, she took these cells and made two new puppers by the name of Miss Violet and Miss Scarlet. Barb says they have different personalities and she's waiting for them to get older to see how much they resemble Samantha. Tell me in the comments below if you have a pet you would love to clone. I know I would love a clone of my German Shepherd that I had in my 20s. Hat tip to Vanity Fair for letting me know about this. I'll put the links to all this stuff in the description below. Alright, time to look at the Coca-Cola setup. Here's a daily chart of Coca-Cola Company. The ticker symbol is KO. And it's been in this descending triangle right here since, oh, late August sometime. A descending triangle consists of a strong support level, which we've got right here around 53.74, and a series of lower highs that put pressure on the support level until it finally breaks. The descending triangle is a bearish pattern, and we anticipate this thing to break to the downside. I will only take a short out of this pattern. If it breaks to the upside, I'll watch to see if we need to redraw the pattern to include the upward break. In a descending triangle, the support level is the important thing. I've drawn this one at the bottom of this candle body right here at 53.74. It's been tested a few times over here. Remember the count of the tests is very subjective and there is no precise definition of what constitutes a test of the line because a line is never just a line, it's always a zone. So I consider these candles here tests of the line as well as this candle right here. And I always like to have a confirmation of a consolidation with a nice decline in volume and volatility. Remember, this is never perfect either. We're looking for a volume downtrend here in the volume bars, lower highs like so and also a drop in the volatility which is measured with the ATR or average true range which is simply an average of the length of the last 14 candles. So here's the plan. We will sell a daily close below the triangle or below 53.74. On the breaking candle if you want to be able to go full size this volume level should reach up to this volume average. If it doesn't reach the average but does at least reach 75 percent of the average I'll open a half size position to reduce risk. You can calculate the percentage by taking the volume level here and dividing it by the volume average here. If you get at least 0.75 on your calculator then you're good. If you don't get at least that much then stay out of the trade. Just stand aside and watch it. The stop loss will be one and a half times the ATR and the first target will be one times the ATR. On the breaking candle you look right over here for the ATR you'll multiply that by one and a half to determine your stop loss and you will measure that behind the price or in this case above the price. So if candle closes down here somewhere you will measure the distance of one and a half ATRs above that for your stop loss. You'll measure the distance of one ATR below that for your target. If after entering the trade we get a candle that closes back inside the pattern here or back above 53.74, we'll take the loss right then and not wait for it to hit the stop loss. Our intention is that a breakout from these patterns should be explosive and hit our target fairly quickly. If the momentum goes away, we want to shut the trade down without taking a full stop if possible. When the price hits our first target, we will close half the position for profit and set the stop loss to break even on the remainder. We will then follow stops as price moves in our direction until the market takes us out. Typically I do this with two positions. The first position has a hard stop loss and a hard take profit at the appropriate prices. The second position will have a hard stop loss and no take profit directly associated with it. My risk on the trade is 2%, so if both positions hit the hard stop loss, it should only cost me 2% of my account. 
No single trade should make or break you. And that's the setup on Coca-Cola. Remember, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you how I handle these trades. If you want more details about what I do, look below this video for a link to my trade management video. And if you've got your own trade management plan that works better for you, please use it. Trading is a very personal thing. Things that work for me may not work for you. You have to understand your personal psychology to find the best strategies for your own trading. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in our trading maxims, which are coming up right now. A maxim is a general truth, fundamental principle, a rule of conduct, or just a proverbial saying. These maxims that I share with you come from all over. The purpose of my maxims is to motivate me to discipline, discipline in trading as well as other areas of my life. And remember, discipline is better than motivation because motivation dies, but discipline is what carries you to the target. I suggest you start your own list of maxims, things that you can say to yourself while you're trading or doing life to make sure you're always doing the right thing. Feel free to borrow from my list. And today we're going to dive into the archives for one of my rant maxims. Tim's trading maxim number 32. There are as many profitable trading styles as there are profitable traders. You're going to hear me say this in many forms because I say it a lot. And the way I said it earlier is trading is personal. The things that I do may not work for you and the things that you do may not work for me. Now, I've told this story before, but it bears repeating. I spent quite a few years trying to learn to trade. I had a day job, so it wasn't like a full-time pursuit or anything for all those years. But I digress. In the course of time, I found a trader that I started following. I learned a whole bunch from this man. He was trading on the 1, 2, and 5-minute charts, and he made money hand over fist every single day. I tried following his style strictly because following rules has always been pretty easy for me. Except I couldn't in this case. I just kept losing money. Why? Well, because he could maintain razor focus on the charts for hours at a time, and I could do it for like seconds at a time. As long as I had multi-minute breaks in between those seconds for watching cat videos and reading email and that sort of thing. So when he was making Cashiola, I was watching YouTube. I mean, come on. Which is better, right? <laughs> so there you go. I just couldn't focus well enough, and the opportunities just kept passing me by. And that bothered me for a really long time. I just thought I wasn't cut out to be a trader at all. But every time I quit, I didn't quit for long because I knew that I could be successful at it. And I stuck with it, and I finally learned what everyone was trying to tell me. I mean, I've been told from the beginning that trading was personal, but, you know, I thought it was just, you know, trainers trying to blow me off or not answer my questions, or they didn't know the answers or whatever. But that's not the way it was. Trading is personal, and just because I couldn't focus well enough to trade on five-second charts didn't mean I was not cut out for trading. I just switched to longer term charts and I created ways to draw my focus back to the charts when I needed to be paying attention. Things like alarm timers that reminded me when a candle was about to close or price alerts to let me know when levels were breached. If you're having trouble trading a certain style, take the time to figure out what's causing your problem and figure out what it's going to take to fix it. Maybe you've got a just make tiny changes to the style so that it fits your personality. Maybe you've got to make huge sweeping changes like changing whole time frames so that you can focus or some other thing. You can be successful at this business, but you're going to have to be honest with yourself and get a real handle on your strengths and weaknesses. Remember our Coca-Cola trade plan here. We're going to sell a daily close below the descending triangle or below 53.74. If the volume is not quite average, go half size as long as it's at least 75% of the average. Your stop loss is one and a half times the ATR and your first target is one times the ATR. And remember to click the link below to the trade management video for more details. And just in case you have trouble focusing even on daily charts, you don't want to miss any one of my trading picks. Sign up for my free trading picks email list to be sure you don't miss any of them. 
I'll be sending out three or four trading picks a week, everything from stocks to futures to cryptos to Forex, and you'll get to see them first. Plus, you'll get first notifications of anything special that's happening. And the best thing, it's free. I'll put the link below this video. And be sure to come back to Trading Strategy Guide's YouTube channel every week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time for my new videos. We'll have a nice trade set up or two on each one and maybe some extra Q&A or training on Wednesdays. And don't hesitate to ask questions that you may have. I try to answer questions as quickly as possible. And remember, the only stupid question is the unasked one. Once again, I ask that you tell me in the comments what you think of our factoid of the day. Is it fun? Lame? Just let me know. I have a thick skin, so be brutally honest. And don't forget to tell me which of your pets you'd like to clone. Or not. <laughs> Maybe you've got a pet you're glad is gone. I, I don't know. <laughs> and take a look at this diner up here, too. Isn't this cool? I, that, I want to go to this place and drink Coca-Cola and eat hot dogs. Follow me on Twitter. Sometimes I post things there. I'll put my Twitter link below. Tell your friends about us and help us make this the best trading channel on the Internet. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up below. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.